Okay, so here we're going to look at a power reducing formula for the integral of the nth power of the sine function. So in practice, if n is a relatively small odd number, you're probably better off not using this power reducing formula and just doing it by hand with the substitution. So let's look at an example of that real quick. So for example, if n equals 5, we have the integral of sine to the fifth x dx. And we can simplify that quite a bit by using the fact that the derivative of cosine of x equals negative sine of x and that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. So using these two facts will allow us to simplify this integral. So what we'll do is we will save one of the values of sine to be made with the substitution, the du part, and write the rest of them using the trig identity. So let's write this as sine to the fourth x times sine of x dx. Now we can take the sine to the fourth power and write it as sine squared squared. So here's what we'll think about here. This is the same thing as sine squared of x squared. And we'll rewrite sine squared using the trig identity. So that gives us 1 minus cosine squared of x, the whole thing squared, times sine of x dx. Okay, good. That, along with this derivative of cosine being negative sine, gives us some motivation for a substitution. So now, let's let u equal cosine of x, which makes du equal minus sine of x dx. Good. And then that changes this integral as follows. This will be minus du. Notice it's not exactly du because we have this minus sign. And then this bit will be 1 minus u squared squared. Okay, so let's see what that gets us. So I'll bring the minus sign out front and that gives us 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth du where I've uh, foiled out this binomial. And then that gives us, so I'll distribute the minus sign um, and integrate in the same step. So that gives us minus u plus 2 thirds u cubed minus 1 fifth u to the fifth plus my constant of integration. And so now we're almost all set. We'll substitute u back or cosine back in for u and be all done. So this, this gives us minus cosine of x plus 2 over 3 cosine cubed of x minus 1 over 5 cosine to the fifth of x plus our constant. <clears throat> and that's the final answer for this example. So now I'll clean up the board and then we'll work more on this power reducing formula in general. Okay, so now we're going to move on to deriving this identity in general. So I've set us up with a reminder that the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and also we'll need this trig identity. So we'll attack this by integration by parts. So if we recall, the general integration by parts formula is as follows. U dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So we'll make use of that formula. So we'll first start off by expanding this integral by pulling out one factor of sine x and grouping it with dx. And that sets us up for a choice of u and v you know, to coincide with the integration by parts formula. So we'll let this bit be u and this bit be dv. So let's see what that gets us. If we set u equal to sine to the n minus 1 x, that makes du equal to n minus 1 sine to the n minus 2 x times cosine of x, where of course we've used the chain rule. And then if dv is equal to sine of x dx, that means v is equal to negative cosine of x. Okay, great. So now we are set up with all the substitution we need to apply this formula. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. u times v 
So that's going to be <coughs> negative sine n minus 1x times cosine of x. And then minus the integral of v du. So minus the integral of v. So that's negative cosine of x times du. So that will be n minus 1 sine n minus 2x cosine of x dx. So let's see if we can simplify that. That'll give us negative sine n minus 1x cosine of x. And now notice we have two minus signs, which you can cancel into a positive. And then we have a cosine and another cosine in the integrand, so we can multiply those together to be cosine squared. And finally, we can pull out the n minus 1. So that gives us <coughs> plus n minus 1 times the integral of cosine squared x times sine to the n minus 2x dx. Okay, fantastic. Now the next thing that we can do is apply the trig identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So we'll use that in the form of cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. So that gives us, this is equal to minus sine n minus 1 of x cosine of x plus the quantity n minus 1 times 1 minus sine squared x times sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll continue on with this problem. Okay, so now we're in a good position to finish this off. So I've written up our last step. So we have the integral i, which is the integral of sine to the nth power is equal to this thing expanded. So here's what we'll do. So I'll copy this part. So I'll have sine n minus 1 x times cosine of x. And now on this term, I'll split this into two integrals. And the two integrals that I get by right distributing this sine to the n minus 2 power onto 1 minus sine squared. So that'll give us the integral of sine to the n minus 2 power of x minus the integral of sine to the nth power of x dx. Great. So, but if we look closely, that retrieves our original integral i. Great, so now let's distribute the n minus 1 to both terms and see what we have. So this is equal to negative sine n minus 1 x times cosine of x plus n minus 1 times the integral of sine to the n minus 2 of x dx minus n minus 1, and now I'll just write i. Great. Now let's transpose this i down, and notice this gives us an equation which we can easily solve for i. So we'll add n minus 1 copies of i to both sides of the equation, so I'll just remark that's what I'm doing here. So plus n minus 1 i to both sides of the equation, and then I'll divide by n, because if I add n minus 1 i's to 1 i, I have n times i, and that'll retrieve us the final answer, which will give us i equals minus 1 over n sine to the n minus 1 x cosine of x plus n minus 1 over n, the integral of sine to the n minus 2 of x dx. And that is our final power reducing formula for the integral of sine to the nth power of x. Okay, good. So before we end this video, we'll look at one application of this. Okay, so now that we've derived this power reducing formula for the antiderivative of the nth power of the sine function, let's apply it. So, oftentimes, 
when you're doing an integral that involves trigonometric substitution, you end up with the n equals 2 version of this integral as the final step. So let's look at the n equals 2 version of this power reducing formula. So that means everywhere I see a n, I'm going to replace it with a 2. So that means I have the antiderivative of sine squared of x equals minus half sine x cosine of x plus 1 half the antiderivative of sine to the 0, but that'll just be the antiderivative of the constant function 1. So let's see what we get. I'm going to rearrange this a little bit so I don't have my hanging minus sign. So the antiderivative of 1 dx is just x, so that gives me x over 2 minus 1 half sine x cosine x plus a constant. So there we get the antiderivative of sine squared. 